We are your Paris. And you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with your Paris. How are you guys? We're good. Thanks for having us. Of course. Thanks for letting me interview you guys. I, I've been a fan of you since the start, basically. <laughs> um, with you as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last time we spoke, it was in the summer. So how have you guys been since? What's been keeping you occupied? Um, well, um, a lot like much of the rest of the world, not a lot has changed. <laughs> We're still inside, still making music instead of performing it really live. Um, so that's kind of where we've been, kind of in studio and just recording and, and kind of banking songs. Awesome. Um, how have you guys been dealing with all these res restrictions as an artist? Have you been more creative or less, do you think? I think at first it was hard to kind of get into the groove of it because we were just so thrown off by everything. But I think we're in a really good place now where we're, we're being super creative and starting to be really productive as well. Um, now that we're kind of like fully in the groove of doing everything from home and remotely, we've had a good opportunity to work with a bunch of different people during this time that like might not have been possible otherwise. So we're actually kind of, we're kind of loving it. Yeah, I feel the same way, like more opportunities have come my way because like artists are less busy, I think, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, do you guys have any fondest musical memories that you want to share? Ooh, um, I mean, we always think back to our last show, which would have been right as soon as the pandemic hit, which would have been late February, Valentine's Day, was it Valentine's Day? I don't know, it was late, yeah. fe late February and and we were just talking about it the other day because it was just kind of the one year uh, since everything shut down in, in North America. And uh, yeah, we were playing a, a bar in Toronto. And after we were finished, we kind of looked at each other and, and said to ourselves, like, this could be it for a while. So, yeah. yeah. Not a fond memory. But, <laughs> but a, memory a no notable more. memory for yeah. sure. And mm -hmm. I think everyone kind of had the feeling that it might be one of the last shows they were going to go to before everything shut down. So everyone was kind of like there for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally agreed. My last show was in March, I think. Who'd you see? Um, uh, James Blunt and Courage My Love. Wow. Yeah. And like, it was so cool, but like, I couldn't hug anyone. We were doing like the. Right. The That's yeah. right. <laughs> so, yeah. Was fun, though. Um, can we talk about your new release? Like, you covered Redbone and it's so different from the original track but so good so dreamy so yeah that was a song that i've actually been playing for a couple of years and then when Layla and i started playing together we we really wanted to try and you know implement her voice in in there and try and find a spot for it and, and collaborate on that um it was yeah it was something i really wanted to do and uh we did a cover last year so we figured here's a here's a year later we might as well do another one and uh yeah, we, we haven't heard too many covers of that song, and we did want to switch it up. So for those who haven't heard it, if you go listen to it, it's, it's pretty drastically different <laughs> yeah. than, uh, than the original. Um, and I think for us, it's cool because that song, like in its core, is very like R&B, um, like has like a lot of like soul in it. So it's maybe not exactly our type of music, but we bring different elements of different genres into everything. So I think it's kind of like a, a good example of how we did that and how we kind of brought our own voice to it. Um, but yeah, it, it feels like a song that's really true to us. We try not to just cover like just anything. It has to feel kind of right for us. And your shirt was that for sure. And this one is as well. Yeah, for sure. And what was the creative process like? Because like, again, like it's an R&B tune and then you turned it into like your Paris. Like how did that go by? Yeah. Uh, so the acoustic guitar that was that playing the whole time is is kind of how we've been playing it forever. And originally the idea was to just keep it completely acoustic and maybe a couple different guitars going on. And then um, I just started building kind of a track to it and we were both kind of digging it and, and uh, sent it around to a couple of people and they all thought it was pretty cool. So we just kind of kept running with that idea and started tossing different vocal ideas around and, and it kind of just snowballed into what it is. So, yeah. Yeah, and we wanted to sort of like reference the original song with that that initial guitar hook that he has. Mm -hmm. We were like trying to figure out how to do that and we ended up kind of playing around with the vocals and that's why at the end there's a lot of the really cool like choppy vocals doing that stuff. It was it was kind of like a fun, This I think this is the first song that like we've both really like experimented with together, I feel like. Um, 
and it's nice to kind of get back to just us doing it um because we didn't have like another producer work on this song at all oh, wow. um was Redbone always the main idea for a cover song or were there other ideas we have like a lot of songs that we play that are covers when we play live um we, especially when we started out because we didn't have as many originals so like we've definitely toyed around with playing doing other covers like Paris is one of our favorite songs by the 1975 so we thought about releasing that um but no I think for Redbone it just kind of like felt right and I think with that one especially we knew that our version was going to be so different sonically and we kind of feel like if we're going to cover something it has to offer something different than the original I think that was the case with this one mm -hmm. yeah totally agree um you've been releasing singles for like years now so can we expect like a full-length project or ep soon uh honestly we, we haven't really thought about that i mean we're kind of enjoying just you know pumping out a new song every every eight to ten weeks and uh it kind of just feels right right now and and the the workflow is kind of just worked out and felt good and and so yeah i, I can't say that we're we're building anything or yeah i feel like there might be a, a natural point in the future where we start to feel like the singles we're doing kind of belong in one kind of like package but right now because we're still in such an experimental phase uh, we're not thinking about how one kind of relates to the other in terms of like the story so i don't know that they would all it what the benefit would be of packaging them together at least now but that might like that might change in just how we're writing and and releasing in the future i guess yeah for sure um if you could describe your music as an animal which animal would it be oh that's you that's nice. <laughs> oh <laughs> i like my <laughs> my first thought was like a lizard because it's like kind of like sneaks up <laughs> on you but then that sounds weird so i don't i don't know what, do you, what? um perhaps the dragon from shrek <laughs> Very comes on quite strong maybe at first but once you get to know it it feels a lot more comfortable okay i feel like that's the most unique like that. how do you like that answer <laughs> most unique one yeah it's a good question took me off guard there <laughs> i like asking everyone because every answer is so different yeah <laughs> and if you could put a song of yours into a movie, which movie would it be and which song? Um, let's each do one. I'll go. Okay. I'll go. Who's going to love you? Into The uh, Great Gatsby. Okay. And I, um, I think I would say Standing in Your Doorway in like The Notebook. Ooh. Something like that. Nothing wrong with that. Nick's a big notebook fan. I love that. <laughs> like any romantic movie would fit so well. Yeah. Yeah, like romantic, but kind of like there's something else going on. Like, you know. Totally agree. Nothing <laughs> wrong, but we're still here. <laughs> and last question. Our music website focuses on upcoming artists. So do you have any favorites at the moment you want to share? Um, we have a kind of like uh, another artist that's in our circles named Zach Oliver. We really like his stuff and he works with um, our producer that we love working with, Damien Birdsey. So we're a big supporter of him. Yeah, I would back that. Um, trying to think. We've been liking, um, oh my God, why can't I remember what they're called? Band? Oh, Valley. It's Valley. Yeah. 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 So we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> I like kind of discovered them like after Nick and, I, and Nick's like, oh, you finally, you finally found them. I'm like, yes, I have all their songs on my playlist. Yeah. yeah. Those are good choices. Thank you so much for letting me interview you guys. This is so Thank much fun. You. Thank you so Appreciate much. It.